Heights, everybody. I know y'all miss me. I miss you guys too. It's been a busy two weeks. My producer was out of town. And then a week after, I had mandatory overtime. And then my daughter's day first day of school. You know, school started back for all the parents out there. Well, in Texas. I don't know. You know, most, I know people up there, they start after um, Labor Day or whatever. But we start early down here, especially like if you're in the charter school. My my kids are in the charter school, so they started last week. Um, and they get out in May. My, my kids, their school is from Monday through Thursday. Fridays, they are out. They have no Fridays. I wish I had no Fridays. So that's my girls' school. They're so lucky. I wish I had that. And then let Davis tell you they always out of school. My kids be out of school for like, I've never heard of a fall break. They have a fall break, winter break, break, spring break, all these breaks. So, <laughs> so yeah, they, they, they stay out of school, but yeah, but if you in Texas or in Dallas or whatever, I know y'all are welcoming y'all kids back to school. We broke parents are officially broke. We broke spending all that money to get the kids ready for school and paying bills at the same time. If you don't have no kids, be mindful because they are very expensive. My my daughters, I have to get their hair braided and stuff like this. So it was, yeah, it was a lot of this going around. Um, so um, it's been very um, tensions in the air between AEW fandoms for the past few weeks. It's been tension. We have been it's been a civil war going on on the timeline between us, AEW fandom. Um, it's crazy. Um, the what I have been seeing as far as like dynamite and collision. Um, I'm not gonna say that it's been bad, but it, the energy has changed a lot. But it's still fun. It's not bad. It's just it's weird within us. Um, I don't know how we lost the plot into being the fun side, but we've been the confronting side. It's, I've just been in the middle. You know what I'm saying? I haven't been in, you know, it's just been a lot going on. So um, All In is coming up in like two weeks. Um, they will be in London uh, at the Wembley Stadium or whatever. And I'm pretty certain the pay-per-view is going to deliver. It's just it's been very weird. Um Lucha Brothers is going to WWE. Um, that was sad news for a lot of us because I don't want to see them leave. But at the same time, they have accomplished a lot in AEW. They've been um, the tag champions. They've been ROH champions. They've been the trios champions. Uh, Ray Phoenix has uh, the first Mexican Triple Crown at AEW. So they have accomplished a lot. And I feel like they just want to add another... Um, you know, we'll just add another belt to that resume because, again, they're, they're just building up their legacy and continuing their legacy in uh, Lucha Libre and as far as um, being household names. So I'm definitely rooting for them um, um, when they do go to WWE. It has been reported today that Penta was out there in Orlando. So it's going to be sad to see them go, but I'm going to always support them. So, of course, I would catch them at a pay-per-view and stuff like that. They do not, don't put them in NXT. Please put them straight to the main card. They deserve to be at the main card, which I feel like they're going to put them right in the main card. It makes sense. But um, that was very sad for me. They also reported that Ricky Starr's going on WWE. I mean, who did not see that coming? Everybody saw that coming. Yay. Ooh. And then also Daniel Garcia has not renewed his contract as of yet. Um, it's, interest on both sides of WWE and of course AW wants them wants him to stay. Uh so we'll see where it goes. I mean this is part of wrestling. Um it's not a monopoly. As you can tell, you know, WWE gets some of our guys. AEW we get some of WWE guys. So you know what I'm saying? So it it helps on both parties. WWE might help Pence to get his yes, because Pizza is an actor. Whether y'all know it or not he is an actor. 
El Santo. He is an actor. So maybe so, but either way, like I always said, it ain't more so about the money with them. It's probably more of just another thing to put. Uh, do we think Ricky would have stayed with AEW had they not kept him on TV for him? No, he his intention probably it was always going to be with WWE. That was always his intention. I never, I've always admired like his talking, but as far as like in ring, he wrestles like a WWE wrestler. He didn't really fit in with an AEW wrestling style, in my opinion. So it's a good move on their part. I mean, AEW not really losing. You can't, you know, say that they lost somebody because, I mean, he didn't obviously want to be there anyway. So why keep somebody that don't want to be there? So that's where he wants to be at anyway. I mean, it's kind of been evident. So, so when nothing that AEW could do to change his mind to stay, because, again, he's a Cody boy, no shade. So he's going to go eventually. So the only person that they didn't really have an interest in is MJF, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, it's rumors that AEW is going to get ricochet. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's it's a good thing. That's why I don't get disappointed or nothing when people leave or join another company. This is what this is what we wanted. Like, it makes it interesting. Like, it's like a. Dream. Draft. Like, okay, who are we gonna get from over there? Who are they gonna get from over there? I just think it's funny that they not they got a partnership with TNA, but they're not really interested in nobody over there like that. <laughs> they like AW built the real stars. We can do something with them though. <laughs> so that's no shade. Okay, so more enough about that. That's all I want to get out because again, this show is going um is going to be strictly on the Olympics. Um, we know the Olympics ended yesterday with the ceremony, and I really want to talk about it um in regards to black Americans and the black black athletes over time and uh how it correlates to 2024. But before we get into that, I want to put up this dumb idea that somebody had on Twitter today. Okay, so Wrestling News said pro wrestling should be an Olympic sport. Um, you, IWC can be very idiotic. I ain't going to say sometimes, it's all the time. Because, like I said on TikTok, pro wrestling is entertainment in America. We know in 2028, United States hosts the Olympics in Los Angeles. And they have added um, lacrosse, flag football, softball, baseball. Um, I'm missing another sport. I'm missing the sport. Um, but they officially dropped breakdance. I blame that Australia later, lady. It's her, all her fault. Oh, yeah, it's squash. Yeah, so lacrosse, squash, softball, baseball, Flag football, men and women's, are added for the 2028 um, Olympics, and they have dropped boxing and also um, breakdance. The men's breakdance did really, really good. It was the women because that girl from Australia, I don't know what they, I don't know what she was doing. It was, I don't know, I don't know. They probably, they probably saw that and was just like, you know what? No, we're not doing that no more. Look like we're giving the gold medals to Mexico and Japan. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was terrible. It was definitely, play that clear, brother, uh, like. <laughs> uh, brother, uh, what's that? It was awful. But yeah, um, so anyways, he said that they was all under that thread talking about, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, it should be a sport. It should be a sport. First of all, wrestling is already a sport, okay? It's already a sport. Like, we won gold in it, women's and the men's. Like, it was different 
um, different, uh, you know, parts of the wrestling that won the gold, but they won gold. And for two, like, it was people under there talking about some, um, yeah, because pro wrestling, st like that one dude was in my mentions saying America started pro wrestling. And I'm just like, first of all, no, they did not. No, they didn't. They didn't start pro wrestling. It's not American. And then I made a point because I'm just like, if they was to add pro wrestling into Olympics, that would be the time where people will see in real time how much America does not value pro wrestling at all as far as like the media and just everything else. Like pro wrestling means something to wrestling fans only, not casuals. And I put examples um, on TikTok, but I bring it to here because WWE pay-per-views are on Peacock. The Olympics ended, and then everybody know that WWE got that pay-per-view coming up. And then you see what Peacock tweeted. Well, what do I do now that the Olympics is gone? The, and they haven't, mind you, they have not promoted that WWE pay-per-view all through that Olympics. They have not promoted not one time. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, yes, I'm a pro wrestling fan, but you have to, to be in tune with reality. The reality of the fact is pro wrestling matters to just wrestling fans. It will not capture no type of casuals. That's what WWE been trying to do for the past 10 years, and it hasn't happened. Okay? And I said, like I said, it died with John Cena. Okay? And it's not happening again. I don't care, like, they, I don't care if they, they invite them on red carpets. I don't care how many times they try to put them on mainstream TV or media or invite rappers and stuff like that. It still doesn't, like, they had Bad Bunny and it still didn't do anything. And that's one of the biggest international artists in the world. It still didn't draw nothing outside of wrestling fans. So it's nothing that they can do to draw casuals because casuals do not care. They do not care about none of these newer generation wrestlers. If it's not nobody with nostalgia from their childhood, they do not care. They do not care at all. Oh, where's The Rock at? Oh, where's Stone Cold at? Oh, where's Triple H at? Oh, where this person at? Hey, oh, Undertaker, where they at? That's Where's Jeff Hardy? That's all they care about. They don't care about no Roman Reigns and none of that. And the only time people know of him is because we got kids. That's why I said, like, it only matters to people with kids or if you're trying to fulfill an inner childhood that you just won't let go. I'm a bad guy too. I'm get, you just, see, you don't know my new format on my show. You don't know my new format on my show, Shan. You ain't been here in a while. <laughs> we gonna get to it. I haven't even get to the intro yet. But I'm just saying like, that was the dumbest suggestion. And then, like I said, I'm just like, like bro, they finally move into Netflix because they tired of getting their ass whooped by NFL. AEW don't really stand a chance because basketball constantly whoop their ass. And then, like I said, I said the, the time where wrestling is hot is during the summer, but Caitlin Clark about to whoop their ass. Like the rise of the WNBA is another threat to pro wrestling because a Caitlin Clark game, she beats a raw viewership. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so at the end of the day, America, Americans love real sports the olympics this year it draws 77 percent more casual viewers than it did for the tokyo one okay it drew like 77 percent and a total of 28.5 million all together and then the the um the nba i mean shoot not nba i'm sorry france versus usa was 19.5 the I'm not gonna say what the women's was because yeah, but they did good though. But 
the the women's win was proving Stephen A. Smith point. I'm sorry. Like it proves Stephen A. I hate to agree with him, but yeah, because they was wearing the girl jersey overseas, even though she wasn't even picked. See what I'm saying? And then on top of them, they asked them to not give them media coverage because they want to focus on winning just to complain about not getting media coverage. And NBC is just like, but y'all told us not to. <laughs> y'all told us not to. So, you know, w WNBA can, can, can be their own, own worst enemy. I don't know why. Like they, it's like they want to be great, but they, they shoot at each other's foot. It's just like they ask you, hey, since y'all, since Aja Wilson is one of, is the best player, best female player in the world, in my opinion, can we give her the media coverage just for them to be like, well, no, we just focusing on winning. Why are y'all messing it up? Like women's basketball is on a rise. Like, why would y'all? messed that up like why are y'all coming in between that like people are starting to watch women's basketball so why would y'all do that i don't know but anywho but it's a bad idea um even though like as successful as the olympics were um they did really good for peacock as you can see peacock loved it they got they they uh got more subscriptions because of the olympic games i know people are going to end up like you know, unsubscribing now because they ain't got no reason to watch it. But um, they got more subscribers because the Olympics, the the viewership was there, and um, there some people gonna come back because of the NFL deal. And um, yeah, so you you not you you not beating real sports. It was a time that pro wrestling was beating real sports, but they not in that time anymore. Okay, it's. The 90s is over, as it, Anthony Edwards said. It's over. The 90s is over. So trying to put add pro wrestling into that against track, swimming, gymnastics, uh, basketball, flag football is about to be added on there. And America loves football because, like, I posted on Facebook, even as successful as the Olympics did, it still did not beat NFL Super Bowl viewership overall. And that is crazy. And that was probably like the least wanted Super Bowl, 49ers versus the Chiefs. It still didn't beat that. Like NFL is way like, I don't think nobody's going to touch NFL when it comes to that viewership. NFL is money. It's to the point where they draft is money okay like the draft do more than any like any basketball any nfl i mean nba finals so that's that all right so um i'm about to get into the show we're back to the topic for today we're about to talk about the black americans in the olympics the correlation to 2024 it is very important for y'all to understand why we are American Requiem, like Beyonce said. But y'all have to understand why everything was purposely done for 2024, why 2024 Olympics was different, especially for Black Americans. So let's get this show started. Monday night, you know what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what that means. Realists on the grab scene, queen of the enemies. All elite with keys. Uh, straight out of Dallas with it. Dynamite fuel, she lit it. Standing on women, then it's going all out. Let's get it, keep it respectful though. Don't want that brawl out. We just talking fallout, storylines and call outs. Say what's the word, kicks? I know y'all heard kicks on air with the facts, not the rumors from dirt sheets. If you's a real collider, then let's ride with her. A real live winner, we going live with her. Yeah. All elite with kicks, yeah, yeah, yeah. All elite with kicks. All elite with kicks, yeah, yeah, yeah. All elite with kicks. Dang, do that mean I gotta take pimps out of my intro now? Dang. <laughs> Dang. Okay, um, 
So yeah, uh, uh, Olympics ended. Thank you. I know. Okay, so uh, the Olympics ended on Sunday, and um, this year, uh, 2024 Olympics was very the probably the most entertaining and also uh, significant uh, to Black Americans, um, especially Black athletes. Um, it was a lot of us this year, especially a lot of Black women. Um, this year in uh, 2024, and there was a lot of history. Well, not a lot of history. Well, yes, it was. It was a few history made. Uh, you know, you had Le LeBron James and Coco Jones um, holding the uh, flag, being the flag bearers and uh, representing America when we was on the, you know, the ship to Paris. That was very dope. Um, but it, it, it took a lot for us to get to that point. For Black Americans to get to that point, like from 1908 to 1996, I feel like those it, it was different time stamps that led to this point, which I'm gonna get ready to talk about now. If you're expecting like a total, total, like a brief, brief, like a whole bunch of history lesson, I'm not gonna give it to you because I'm, I'm gonna have a timely episode. But you're gonna see what I'm I'm talking about as you know further on into the episode getting to my point um so it's it's very very important and this was a time like you know we all jokingly on black twitter and also on tiktok how you know now the olympics over we ain't pay you know we don't have to be patriotic anymore and things like that but we're very patriotic when it comes to uh the olympic time because you know we see a lot of black athletes it's a lot of representation and uh we be rooting for our folks we root for our people <clears throat> And we are Black Americans. We stay here. We live here. We we are America. That's that's the whole point. Um, in my opinion, of this year's 2024 uh, Olympics, like from the from when Beyonce introduced the you know United States to LeBron James and Coco Jones, which I'll get into further further down uh, the episode. But if you don't know, um, in 1908. You know, 1908 Olympics, that's where we had the first black athlete to represent America. And he, he was John Baxter Taylor Jr. And he ran track and he was the anchor of the track team. Um, his story, um, I was trying to do a lot of research due to a lot of it has not, you know, it disappeared over time. Um, he doesn't really get the recognition that he should because of the lost history facts of him um, because he died so soon. He died like four months after he received his, um, you know, he did represent in America. Um, I believe it said that he had a, a heart failure. He, had, he was, you know, he had bad health, but he was the first black athlete to represent us in um even though that they didn't really necessarily had the TV, they had it like the telegram at the time. So, you know, the black Americans at the time, they, you know, they knew of him, they was happy about it. Even though, you know, he had to go through the bag, he couldn't travel with the team and all those different um, obstacles he had to personally face to get to that point. They didn't want to, uh, they didn't give him the flag. Um, they didn't let him hold the flag or none of that stuff. So he represented America, but, you know, he wasn't allowed being, you know, because he was black, he wasn't allowed to hold the flag, none of that stuff at that time. But what I'm getting at is if it wasn't for, you know, him being brave enough to want to participate because he knew it was bigger. It was, it was way bigger. The vision that he had at a young age. And um, he said in, a, um, in an interview that it's bigger than what I'm going through now. Like it's way bigger. This is something that somebody will, will know coming up. And he was right because th that person after him was in 1924 Olympics, which was Mr. William D. Hart Hubbard. And that was the first black athlete to win gold. Um, now, Solo William D. Hart Hubbard, he won gold on an injured foot. 
and his foot got injured because of racism. He did the um, the long jump. And, you know, when you do the long jump, you, you, you know, you run and you, you do the you hit the sand. Now, in this third scenario, they purposely put a concrete. So when he, he landed, he hit his foot, hit the concrete and not the sand part. And he thought it was sand and it broke his foot. So he's limping. And it, and it turned out that, you know, they it was a technical scratch. OK. So he turned around and they wanted him to quit because they didn't want this black guy to win his gold. They wanted him to quit. He broke his foot. What, what he did was he went back and he tried it again and he won gold with a broken foot. See what I'm saying? Like, that didn't stop him because it was bigger. The vision was bigger. You might not have understand it, but the vision was so bigger because it influenced more to join, which was the 1936 Olympics, which everybody knows in the history books with Jesse Owens. But it was 18 black athletes at this time. It wasn't just one this time. It was 18. And then that was the year where we had our two first black women representing uh, the Olympics as well, which was Miss Tidy Pickett. Where are my pictures? Oh, there you go. Tidy Pickett and Lewis Stokes. Those was our first two black female athletes that was in the Olympics. And um, they was on the track team, okay? They didn't win a medal or anything, but it's just the representation of black women because white women were already in the Olympics, but we didn't have black women representing. Black women were athletes too, but this was our first two out of the 18 athletes. This was during the time Jesse Owens was in the, uh, you know, this was in Berlin. And this is the, everybody knows the Berlin Olympics. And the reason why I'm not really so much uh, talking about uh, talking about Jesse Owen because we know that that story, but nobody talks about the two black women that um, the first black women in the Olympics. So that was the first representation for black girls, black, um, and also that was the first time in history it was 18 total black athletes uh, representing America and. The reason why it was never documented that it was 18 because it was still under the Jim Crow. They didn't want, you know, at the time, they didn't want America to know that we had so much, you know, Negro folks over there. So they, Jesse Owens, even though he got ridiculed for, for it from some of the teammates, you know, some sometimes, you know, when, when, when things happen, because Black people, we still do it now. Sometimes you don't see the vision and Jesse Owens, you know, he had to deal with criticism from, you know, the 18 athletes because it was certain scenarios that they was benching. You know, some of them was there to be placeholders for the white athletes. So basically they did the pre trials but you're not running all y'all black folks is not running this race we're picking you know y'all y'all getting us there but y'all sitting down that's basically what happened and jesse owens was the only one that was able to represent um america at that time even even at that time when they was uh you know uh they didn't want jews to run they was still they still didn't want black people to replace them either so it, it was a lot going on and it happened to the first two black women too. They was there. They didn't place because they was placeholders for the white athletes, for the white women athletes. They won the pre-trials, but they couldn't do like the finals. Okay. But they are our first two black women, which, you know, Jesse Owens did, um, an interview after he won and that's when he did the famous, you know, I came back to America. I still got to come back from the back to receive uh, my honor and uh, things are still segregated. Things are still like he was very 
on a political standpoint when he came back. Like, I'm a, you know, I'm American champion, but I'm still treated like crap back in America. Like y'all are throwing a parade and stuff for me, but you still treat me like, um, like I'm not an American or, uh, you know, during the Jim Crow era. And that, you know, the interviews and the things that Jesse Owens stood for inspired two more people. And this Olympus is very famous because it's still one of the fires pictures in Olympic history, which is 1968 Olympics was John Carlos and Tommy Smith when they took the political stance on the podium. That's still probably one of the most fierce pictures in, in history, in my opinion. And they took that stance because if you don't, you don't know that 1968 was very, very significant in a shift in American history. That was around the time that Martin Luther King was assassinated. That was around the time where um the um you know they all the the burning down the cities and and different things like that it, it was just very 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 chaotic and they stood for black justice they stood tall that black folks are still getting unequal treatment so you know we know the history that they took their gold medal and the silver medal um, I'm sorry, not that were bronze. They took the gold and bronze from them. They erased them from the Olympic um, record book from that for doing that. You know, he had the uh, Black Power, the Black Panther Fist. This is always significant. I love this. Like, they, they, um, you had a uh, Tommy Smith, he had his jacket unzipped, which was caused like a, they, violated him from not being in dress code they had on the um the green and the red and the black beads all of that like it's beautiful but they did that because um i remember um john carlos and i was taught this in school um he stated when he you know used to read about jesse owens and his stance on political stance and also muhammad ali we know of course is known for taking political stance as an athlete um, even though, you know, you don't have to say much, but you show it. And this is a powerful image um, and to for to display in front of like the world. And they got booed for it. They was booed. They was booed, harassed. Their families was harassed. Never, nobody will never talk about after this picture was taken. They never talk about after. Because they was harassed. They harassed their family. They couldn't get no job. Like NAACP had to step step in. Like no, like they was getting blackballed everywhere. Nobody wouldn't hire them. Nothing. Like completely blackballed. Sometimes sacrifices are meant to be made because with all like black kids seeing this at that time, it meant something. Not even just kids, just the black communities. It meant something. Like nobody's gonna say nothing. This don't I don't have to say much. Like they doing the national anthem and they got their black fist up. And then seeing something like that inspired a a young lady who inspired like she she's the mother of all the current girls. And that's the 1984 Olympics, Miss Flo Jo, rep representing the black urban girls. Because when she stepped on the scene, she was getting criticized for her attire. You know, it's trendsetting now, but it wasn't a trendsetting then. I'm waiting on my picture, man. There you go. It was a trendsetting now. But it wasn't back then because they gave Flojo a hard time. When she came out with these looks and the nails and stuff like that, they gave her a hard time for it. It's praise now, but she represented all the girls from the hood, all the black girls from the urban communities. She represented all of us because when it comes to black athletes, especially during the 70s, like they had to look a certain way. Black women had to look and carry themselves a certain way to be taken seriously or to be, you know, resilient. But Flojo came in 
Like this is this is who I am. This is me. That's the Cali girl. Like she came in like this. I'm gonna add something to it. And she inspires the Shakir Shakiris and on down the line. Like we see it now. Like her impact, we see it. We see it now, which we'll talk about in 2024. But you see what I'm saying? Like the past, it delegates the future, especially with Black Americans. Just like 1992 Olympics, the dream team. You know, that was the first year that professional players represented America. We know like the Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Charles Barkley, all them old people. <laughs> this, this is the famous where uh, what's the name was just like, I met the requirements. I just didn't get picked. <laughs> I met what he say. I met the requirements. Just didn't get picked. Don't we got the video? Do we got that video? I think we do. He probably about that. No, we don't got that. I don't have it out. <laughs> so the dream team, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the famous black basketball players, especially Michael, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, you know what I'm saying? And Larry Bird, but he ain't black. So we speaking on the black people right now. Okay. But Larry Bird. But they inspire what we see further. And I ain't gonna talk about that dude right there. Because that man is a certified love boy, certified pedophile, and I ain't talking about him. So you can mark him off because I'm not talking about that man. But <laughs> but yeah. Um, which also another one from 1990, uh, the 1992 Olympics, Mr. Magic um Michael Johnson, the golden shoes. He wore them gold. What he say? His famous was uh I'm not wearing golden shoes without the gold to match my shoes. He's 96. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm ahead. I'm sorry. That's Olympic 1996, y'all. I'm sorry. I said 92. But yeah, the golden shoes. The same, like the same year where we get our first black female gymnast, which was Dominique Dodds. I say her name wrong. I'll find my last name. Miss Dominique. That's what I'm saying. The first gold black gymnast. And she walked so others could fly, so others could soar. But it wasn't an easy task for her because she was discriminated against because they said that, you know, they tried to make fun of her weight. They tried to make fun of her uh, her hair texture, her posture. At one point, they tried to say that she was fat and she wasn't because she's hippie. Black girls, black women are curved different. And they didn't find her beautiful. And they had a lot to do because she was black. She didn't fit the beauty standards to be a gymnast and one go. Miss Dominique. So, like, I think these years, because 1908, 1924, 1936, 1968, 1994, 1992, and 1996 are the most significant years in Olympic history. For black Americans for a reason. It was a lot of first and barriers broken. And those years, all of them helped cultivate what we saw currently in 2024. That's why it makes this year so different because if it wasn't for these barriers being broken, we wouldn't see what we saw in 2024. If it wasn't for Again, John Baxter Taylor Jr. even just having the courage as young as he was and as scared as he was because around that time, Jim Crow was on a whole different level, okay? And he still chose to represent America because he knew him going to represent uh, other Black kids along the way. And we saw that parallel effect. Domino effect, domino effect, domino effect. So 2024, yes, and that picture right, right there, y'all, that's the first um, black gold. That's the one that broke his foot. 
That's the one that they tried to harm mid, you know, while he was doing his thing. They placed the concrete on there and covered it up with sand and he hit his foot really bad. They like, I when I was reading up on him, uh, it's that you could hear it. And he still chose to, to do the long jump and won. That's so that's with him, uh, D. Har Hubbard. He won the man that won on one foot. Okay. So again, 2024, again, was one of the most entertaining and um, significant Olympics, especially for Black Americans. It was so much representation for us and for kids to see. Like, it popped off with Beyonce introducing USA. And like I said on TikTok, people do not understand Cowboy Carter is very Everything that Beyonce does is intentional and it's calculated. And I'm not saying calculated in a bad way, but Cowboy Carter is actually a political statement. That's probably one of her, you quote unquote, wokest albums she's done. If you listen to what she's saying on this album, I know people been upset because she was like, she doing all of this flag, this flag, this all this flag stuff. She introduced the team with the song Yaya in the back. And I already know they, they probably picked Yaya because they thought it was a uplifting song and it's an up-tempo song. It's like an old Chuck Berry type of music. But they don't know the words. Let me tell y'all something. She opened up this song. I'm going to read it to you. My family lived and died in America. Good old USA. A whole lot of red in that white and blue. History can't be erased. Like, come on. And then on top of that, you had LeBron and Coco. You had LeBron and Coco being the flag bearers. Why this song is playing? Are you looking for a new America? Are you tired of working time and have time to pay? That's Beyonce. Like I said all the time, if you listen to American Requiem, the the message is so clear in that song what Cowboy Carter is about. The message is so so clear. And I say it all the time. And and we're starting to kind of waking up to it because that album is telling us. We are not guests in this country. We need to stop having that mentality that we are guests in this country. We are America. We cultivate America. Our ancestors built this country. They can't keep treating us like guests, and we, we got to get out of that mentality. You see what I'm saying? And then you have a black man holding a of being a, a flag barrier. I know Coco was a part of it, but being that LeBron was taller, um, a black man was holding that flag, leading the way. While Yaya is playing. Like, that picture is fire. In the rain. George Washington would, could never. He could never. That was that was beautiful. And then on top of that, hip hop made it so far that you had Snoop Dogg is like the official host of the Olympics. This man was once hated. This man music was banned in households. And now those people like he's loved. He's probably one of the most famous rappers there is. Hip hop is a black American genre. Shout out to the Bronx. <laughs> like that's that's y'all see what I'm getting at? Like the significance of black America, black Americans in this 2024 Olympics. There is no America without us. Like Simone Biles made history being the most decorated Olympian of all time. 
And that wouldn't have been possible without 1992 Olympics. I'm sorry, not 1992. 1996, my bad. That wouldn't have been possible without Dominique. It wouldn't have been possible if Gabby Douglas didn't see Dominique. And then Simone seeing Gabby Douglas. Because Gabby Douglas don't really get her, the credit that she deserves. But it took somebody to see Dominique to be like, I want to do that. And then it took somebody else to see, I see Gabby. I want to do it. And then Simone Biles just took off. And now we got Simone. And then they Jordan, Ch Jordan Childs is still my bronze medal champion. I don't care what they say. She won that bronze. Okay. And they inspire so many other black girls to want to do gymnastics or to find the resources so they can do gymnastics. People didn't want the Olympics in California, but Snoop, exactly. And then you had the women's track team. Phenomenal this year. Shikari Richardson, Dallas native Oak Cliff in a building. The hardships, we know her story. And she won silver. That was some bullshit, though, because they didn't let her warm up. They her and she, they did her and Shelly Ann wrong. But she still won silver. And then she won her gold being an anchor during the 4 by 100 meters. And, you know, she did it with style. You see, she has the long nails and stuff like that. But that wouldn't that wouldn't be nothing if Flojo didn't exist. A girl from a, a area just like me, we from the same location where she's from literally like four blocks from where I'm from and where I stay. Because Flojo inspires so many girls from urban communities to run trade. Shikari Richardson, she's openly spoke, like she's a fan of Shelly Ann, of course. And also Flojo is always mentioned from her mouth. And then you have the queen, Miss Sydney. Desires. And she's so pretty. The queen, once she won the 400 um, meter hurdle and the most decorated long distance runner of all time. Um, she broke her own record this year and she be taking off. When she take off, she gone. She is gone. Very beautiful too. And like more representation for more black girls winning the gold. You had Gabby Thomas. She won a 200 meter. She won three gold this year. She won a 200 meter, the four by one, and the four by four. She a three time gold winner this year. Like black women was womening. <laughs> That's not a word, but I made it up. Black women was women in. And then, I mean, and then the men, they did their thing. I don't want to talk about the, the four by 100 relay because that was, that was crazy. That was, I don't know what happened. People was taking off early. People weren't grabbing the batons. That was tragedy. That was very tragic to see. Um, they pissed off Carl Lewis. And then I don't want to talk about that boy, but he won his little gold or whatever. It's cute. Um, uh, we Quincy, Quincy Hall, you know, he didn't give up in the 400 meter. You got that same energy. Just like in 1924, didn't give up. You know what I'm saying? Like he was coming in from fourth. 
No, fit. He was in fit and caught up and want to go. That not give up spirit. Because we don't give up. At the turn. Yes, that was crazy. He did not give up at all. Like He kept the stride and just found, like, I got to get there. I got to get there. And he got there. And then you had the men um, there under in the four by 400 and um the uh qual the the pre-trials um you had the youngest um he's 16 and he got injured he uh i think, think they said either he pulled he pulled something he pulled or aggravated something and he wasn't able to run the final but he did still get a gold but um they made an olympic record and you know that 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 is what the men from the 1936 olympics wanted to do instead of being placeholder for those white men that's what they did at the pre-trials but they weren't able to do the finals because they were black and now we have black men black american men still holds the record for the four by 400. And then also USA Women's Soccer, you had Mallory Swanson doing the game winner. You know what I'm saying? And, and we won the gold in soccer because of her. Shout out to black women, you know what I'm saying? One day, um, and then you had the USA Women's Basketball. They made their history, eighth consecutive gold at the Olympics. Aja Wilson is the Olympic MVP. And the men's, the USA Men's Avengers, the basketball team winning gold. And, you know, the USA men's 2024, the Avengers. Oh, yeah, Dennis Rodman's daughter is on the soccer team. Dennis Rodman, again, basketball. You know what I'm saying? The Dream Team was being the first to use professional basketball players in the Olympics. That wouldn't have been... If that didn't happen, we wouldn't have had the USA Men's Avengers. So, like I said, the past, it correlates to the future. And it's significant and it means something. So that's why it was just so beautiful to see in real time. Like, USA all together, most of the goal was the women. And this is not just Black women. It was just women in general had the most gold this year in um, the Olympics history, in American Olympic history. Women's sports is elevating to a whole different level. And wrestling is still behind when it comes to showcasing women. They're still far behind. And that's how they're, they're you know, little girls are, are able to see women dominate in swimming women dominate in gymnastics, basketball, tennis. Uh, Cause Coco was in tennis, even though she didn't place because again, they was, they was on some BS out there with her. Um, Just uh, uh, what's the sword? The sword one, cause it was a black woman in that one. The sword, that, um, we were just everywhere. It was black men too, sure. It was one that did the skateboard. Like we're doing everything, like we're not limited. It was a, a black man in gymnastics. We're, we're not limiting ourselves in just football and basketball, even though I do love basketball. But I'm just saying like black people, black Americans are not limiting themselves to just track basketball, football anymore. We can do other things. And I'm glad that black kids can see that you can see it's a black man that's representing skateboarding. You can see a, a black woman that's doing swimming. You can see a black woman that's doing tennis. You can see um, a black person doing the, the sword. <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but I know she got, they got the sword. Leave me alone. You can... <laughs> uh, 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 we had a black representation in, um, was it ping pong? It, it was 
those are different things that that you see black athletes in or participating in water polo like we're in water polo y'all niggas was in paris for real for real like for real we was in paris for real black athletes had them goals on the grills the chains the nails like that's black american all day black american all day and i always think about it's on uh that jay-z song but it's uh him see doing that interview when he said um i wrote it i copied and pasted it and that's on the uh fuck you me you know i got it song with him and rick rose and um you know when he said a little when he said uh where i'm gonna start that when he said uh everything that's out here for kings like us the reason why we like this this jewelry and this diamonds and stuff they understand because we really from africa and that's where all the stuff come from and we originated from kings so don't talk down on the youngsters because they want to have shiny things it's in our genes that's a bar it's in our genes so it was just amazing to see black americans able to be black americans like every time when black americans are able to be themselves it always calls some type of discourse but this is like the first time we was able to be ourselves and not hear shit about it like simone bowles was doing that glorilla challenge dance in peace nobody said nothing Jordan Childs was able to wear her gold. Quincy Hall won the 400 wearing his, he was slugged up. USA men's basketball team, we get very competitive and we talk shit on the court. The only people that was mad about that, uh oh, my connection is choppy. Can you hear me now? Is that my connection, Chubby? Is that good now? Am I okay now? Am I okay now? I'm waiting on if y'all can hear me. Okay. People are saying they can hear me. Is it sure it's mine or it's yours? Because they saying they can hear me. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, y'all. We had a little technical difficulties, but I'm about to get off anyway. But um, but yeah, that's just based of this show. I just wanted to highlight the black Americans. Um 
just history as to you know how we got here and why 2024 is significant to the youngins especially um future black american athletes because it comes back and it's going to be in the states in the 2028 um we'll probably see some different faces um different inspiration and seeing things like this inspires more black kids to want to to you know represent america and the point is we are here we've been here for almost 300 years at this point everything that black american do it is america it wouldn't be america without us we brought style we brought fashion we brought swagger like like black americans is one of the most especially black women we are the most copied and it's it was a big diaspora war it's always a diaspora war like if we didn't see nothing else this year we saw that because it was crazy to see people from the Caribbeans and also in um, African continent root against us, but cheer for they like oppressors. It was weird to see people, especially with the USA men's basketball, they was wanting Serbia to beat us. Meanwhile, we were rooting for them. So it just shows how alone we really are. Like nobody truly fucks with black Americans at all. So if we didn't see nothing else, we saw that we are our own culture. It's it yes, we probably it's it's probably true that we don't know where we came from, but we know the now. We are black Americans, we ain't going nowhere, we are here to stay, and we are America. And it's not America without us. God damn it. And y'all can try to get y'all best players, but it don't mean nothing because I'm not seeing this in anything. You're not. Food, none of that. So I just wanted to do that um, today. Even though it's over, well, it's not truly over the um, Paralympics. It does start on the um, the twenty eighth. You know the um, the disabled community. They have some athletes, and they be going hard. They be they be doing their thing. And then the Winter Olympics is next year. I gotta make. I gotta Google to see some black people that's in the Winter Olympics. I know we got a few of them that be out in them snows and doing stuff. I know it's a few of them out there. I'm going I'm to try to see what's going on. But as far as like the Summer Olympics, I, I know of the Summer Olympics. And I know that is in 2028, which they passed that flag down to Tom Cruise. Um, dangerous self. Tom Cruise jumped down from the stadium. I had Ted Davis because somebody had said in the comments, time and, time, and I bet that felt like stepping over the curve for him. And I'm pretty certain he asked them, could he jump off a plane? And they was like, no. No, Tom Cruise, you're not jumping off a plane. Just just do that. We don't even want you doing that, but we're going to let it slide. Okay? But yeah, so we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the sacrifices the past have made and the statements that they have made and uh, the representation and um, um, standing for something so the future generation can see. Because like I said, 1908 inspired 1924, inspired 1936, inspired 1968, which inspired 1984, inspired 1992, and inspired 1996. And all of these inspired 2024. Like it literally cultivates 2024. Cause like I said, we had black men to represent the four by 400 in 1936. They wasn't allowed to run just for 2024. The black American men um, still hold 
the consecutive title for the 4 by 4 100 meter relay. Just like if Dominique didn't do the 1996 Olympics, it wouldn't have inspired Gabby, which wouldn't inspire Simone Biles. And now we have a black woman being one of the most decorated Olympian of all time. And that wouldn't have happened if Dominique did not break that barrier. Just like if Flojo didn't participate in 1984 Olympic, it wouldn't have inspired black girls that is uh, crack babies or babies that is uh, they ghetto and this and this and this. It wouldn't inspire those girls to run track. And now we have Shakari Richardson. So all of that, you know, John Carlos, what, what, what he put that up there? John Carlos and Tommy Smith political stance in 1968, where we just want, you know, equality. We want equal treatment. 1968. And now you have a black man in 2024, LeBron James being a flag bearer. So always, always, always honor your past, especially honor the past. Um, when Black Americans are patriotic, it's more because it's people representing us. It doesn't really have so much to do with love in America, but we are America. Yes, let's show that stuff big. We are America. Okay. <laughs> so, um, we was introduced by a black American woman from Houston, Texas with a political statement song. And they just thought it was just an uptune song. No, that song meant something. Like, look at that, y'all. Look what's Steph Curry, Steph Curry, that was a good game. Like, that was crazy. That was crazy. Insane. All he needed to learn was the Olympics three-point is not the same as the NBA three-point, and it was over. That was beautiful. That's a beautiful shot. But yeah, uh, they, that point of view is beautiful too. Look at that. Is that Jimmy Fallon? There's so many people in there. I know that's Keon. I know that's Melo. That's Carl Lewis. Marbury O. This picture is crazy. Bro, Americans really be traveling and to represent for USA. Like, I give it to the white people. Shout out to the white Americans that that they got that bread to travel and just feel like putting that PTO in just to be out there to make sure that we have fans. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. I I I, I will say that. Shout out to white people traveling like shout out to the white folks because they be out there we don't be alone overseas like they be out there where where america going to we going shout out to y'all but yes yeah, so that is it for tonight um now i'll get back on track with wrestling next week on aw um all in is uh two weeks away it is all in season, so we'll get into it. Um, I did go to Collision uh, Saturday. It was a lot of fun. I did enjoy myself. Um, I was in mommy's mode because the dude next to me, he brought his son, and his son was kind of acting out, and he was getting a little frustrated, and I had to tell the little boy, sit down. Your daddy told you to sit down. You need to sit down. And don't be kicking that person's chair no more. And he didn't do it since. 
you ain't gonna be doing all of that sitting next to me. That's why I don't bring my kids to no wrestling show. Sit down. And he sat down. So, yeah. So, um, be back next week. Uh, it will be AEW, of course. And uh, be sure to follow me, um, all Elite with Kicks. Uh, make sure you hit the notification button. Um, subscribe to the channel. And um, again, shout out to the Black athletes all over. Football season is upon us. I don't want to talk about the Cowboys right now because Jerry Jones is pissing me off. And I don't want to talk about it. So, again, see y'all next Monday. I will be here and hit my getaway music. First of all, there's no such thing as white collar crime. And there's definitely no such thing as black on black crime. Crime is crime. Let me explain something to you. I don't care if you have a white collar or a tank top. If you rob me, I'm going to whoop your ass.